Do you understand how much uh, manipulation there is in the workplace, in families and neighborhoods, even within large families? People are always tallying out their good works and what they're going to get back. Have you noticed this? Do we not do this to each other? Well, we had them over, so hopefully they'll have us over. We paid for that. Hopefully they'll pay for this. You know that exchange? That is absolutely self-serving. Jesus says, when you throw a feast, do not invite the rich and the wealthy and your friends, lest they repay you and invite you in return to their feast. Luke 14. Jesus goes, instead, this is one of those verses that blows your mind. Jesus goes, instead, when you're having Thanksgiving meal this year, right? When you're having a big feast, instead, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. And then Jesus goes, because they cannot repay you. That breaks the English language, doesn't it? You will be blessed by inviting a bunch of impoverished people who are crippled over to your house, lame, blind. You'll be blessed because they cannot repay you. And Jesus goes, I will reward that at the resurrection of the just. Jesus says that. So in other words, if there is an actual love for others because Christ has so loved us, the freedom we have to serve and love is coming out of an actual affection. We're not tallying the sheet. Jesus also said this in Matthew, the Sermon on the Mount. I think it's Matthew 5-ish, 6-ish, somewhere. Somewhere it is written, right? It's, It's in there somewhere. Jesus says, do not the tax collectors love those who love them? Do not the hypocrites love those who treat them well? He says, that is not worthy of anything. He says, I'll tell you what, love your enemy. Pray for those who persecute you and then you will be like your father in heaven who brings the rain down on the just and on the unjust. God makes the sun shine on the good and the bad. Jesus goes, listen, okay, okay. I hope this is clear because this is hard to explain, but bear with me here. It takes, okay, follow this, please, please, please. It takes emotional energy and power and strength to forgive annoying people. Can I get an amen? amen. That was way too loud. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it, it takes, um, it takes, emo- not follow this. It takes emotional strength and power to forgive when someone wrongs you, right? And especially they do it over and over and over again, right? So, okay. The world says the way you get your strength to love people is by their loving you in return. So the energy you're drawing from, the source you're drawing from is the other person, which is why half of marriage is in a divorce in our country, right? The husband goes, so long as you're treating me the way I want to be treated, I'll treat you the way you want me to treat you. And then as soon as the wife upsets the husband, he holds it against her and holds it over her until she does enough good works to pay him back, and then he can start loving her again. And the wife does the same thing to the husband. The joke in marriage counseling is, I'm perfect, she's the problem. And she goes, I'm perfect, he's the problem. Every marriage counseling situation, the husband lists the wife's sins and the wife lists the husband's sins because we're keeping tabs. Love keeps no record of wrongs, right? How in the world can anybody have the emotional fortitude, the power to forgive the unforgivable and genuinely, without hypocrisy, love back your enemy? How can you do that? That is impossible. And the answer is this. In the gospel, our reserve tank for energy and love comes from an infinite well. Jesus is infinite love for you. You don't siphon it from the other person. You siphon it from the cross. And the cross is the height and width and length and depth of the love of Christ is infinite. Why is it infinite? Because what you are saved from is an infinite eternity under God's judgment in a place called hell. The price Jesus paid was infinite because of the separation in his humanity from the Father. I want to footnote this. The Trinity wasn't fractured or broken when Jesus died on the cross, but touching Jesus' human nature, there was a real separation, and he really did undergo God's judgment on the cross. That was infinite. What we are saved for is infinite. Everlasting joy in the new creation on a new earth under a new heavens with Jesus as king. That is infinite. And how much we did not deserve it was infinite too. So if you want to go north, south, east, and west on this thing, it is infinite in every direction, which means the love of Jesus will never run dry.